Hi, welcome to the Andrew Buckle book review of X-Men The Hidden Years Omnibus. Now this is by John Byrne and Tom Barmer. The book just came out. It's uh, 2024 and it's got 624 pages. Price was about £60 for me. Uh, you can find copies up to £85, £100, I'm quite certain. Whole mix prices. Currently it's Amazon, I think it's 85 and includes a weird mix of stories. You've got here the X-Men Hidden Years, 1 to 22. Doesn't actually ever say, oh, I couldn't find anything anyway, when they actually came out. I think 1991, so there's quite a few years ago now. 30 odd years ago. But also includes, weirdly, Fantastic Four, 102 to 104. Though that storyline does actually feature in, in the book. I don't know why they included those. They could have included a number of other sort of missing or hidden stories that would have been much nicer. But still, it also includes the amazing adult fantasy number 14, one story from that with Steve Ditko. So let's go through the book. Weirdly, they didn't include the covers. What an oversight. Why? Why? However, you got this, which I think looks absolutely lovely. Now, the X-Men, of course, are in there. I think it was issue 40, I think, when they changed to this, obviously, from the original costumes. And you can see, obviously, there, the back there. A variety of different villains. Very odd selection. And probably one of the reasons why people like or don't like this book. Online, lots of people really hate this book. I personally think it's a lovely little story. And I thoroughly enjoy it. It is a bit all over the place. There are times when you're reading it in the final, you've got a storyline and then suddenly two or three issues later, the story continues. And you're thinking, hey, what? <laughs> where did that come from? Why is that taking so long to get to that part of the story? Very odd. But still, also it features some great but not as great as, of course, the original sort of 109, 110, that sort of period. X-Men, I love that sort of Terry Austin, brilliant John Byrne artwork. But this, I mean, this is one of the worst. I think truly awful. I mean, that is just appalling. Why include that as a start? And also the next page as well. Right across there. I mean, I mean, I hate that. It's just awful, isn't it? Crunch across X-Men, why, why not just put it on one page so you get X-Men written properly? So, and also, not only that, you've got there, you've got Crystal, and you've got the Human Torch, which is not really X-Men, particularly. They do feature in the story, but it's just odd to include that. You've got this, and this one apparently was the page X-Men pin-up, uh, The Hidden Years prologue, and this is from X-Men number issue 94. Well, obviously not probably the X-Men 94 that came out originally. But you've got the Blob, you've got the Juggernaut, of course. You've got lots of the great characters. And it does finish off some of the storylines that were, obviously, from the original comics that are quite nice. You've got Mastermind, etc. And you've even got the Hulk. Of course, the Hulk turned up very late in the storylines. So you've got... And also, of course, you've got the storyline there with Professor X, where we find out that Professor X is still alive. Of course, we knew that from X-Men 66. But you've got the Hulk there. And you also got other characters there. Polaris, or obviously the daughter of Magneto, as she was then. And the Sentinels, and of course, various other pharaohs there as well. And Sauron, and Sauron, and Sunfire. And I love that one. That's quite a <laughs> very dramatic uh, page there. And also, they go off to the Savage Lands. Slightly confusing story with Kazar as well in that. But it does bounce all over the place. And it's it, it, it probably at times you might think, ooh, maybe a couple of re-readings this. I read this years and years ago, so it was nice just to dip into it again. And I generally followed the general gist of the story, but slightly confusing. And see, very dramatic sort of cover there. That one's it. Now they include the covers again, which is very odd at the back in the bonus material. I'm not certain why they did that. Why they just didn't do this properly, just show the page without all the obviously the writing on it, and just done it once would have been much nicer. Just also having that banner at the bottom, you know. I mean, it just seems odd, personally. And you've also got there the hidden years again. This is issue three. That's strange. That's issue two. Oh, okay. So obviously something <laughs> was a gap with issue two. Anyway. You've got the wings of the angel. Some of the fonts and the writing was terrible. I have, that's the one thing that slightly bugged me with this. It really not, just doesn't look nice. Doesn't look nice at all. And the panel structure is easy enough to read, but at the same time, that, that sort of front bit always just annoyed me slightly. That's quite dramatic pictures there. I have no idea what they are, but still very dramatic. And you've course got Cyclops there, Marvel Girl, and some other character there. 
again, some of these characters introduced, you find out later about various things as well. There's a sort of other mutants and, like I say, Craven's involved. Everyone's Submariner. Loads of people turn up in this set of stories. And you've got this weird, obviously there's Candy there, sort of a weird sort of sentinel character. <laughs> I don't even know what robot that is. But whatever it is, obviously, yeah. And more stories, obviously, with Kazar or Kazar. I never know how to say his name, so. And, of course, good old Oro turns up before she becomes, of course, Storm. Obviously, that's later on. And also, you've got, weirdly, a character that looked, when I first saw it, I thought, ooh, Apocalypse, is it? But looks like Apocalypse, anyway, to my eyes. Why? Well, but you got obviously the you got the Fantastic Four turns up, Fantastic Four turns up later as well, and the Sentinels again, and oh, you got that storyline with the aliens that were in issue sixty six. It was an alien invasion that X Men, oh sorry, Professor X stopped by using a pretty powerful way of transmitting his thoughts via everyone else, and it was a very dramatic scene at the end, and also of course. So you've got the Phoenix as well. Obviously, for very early part of the Phoenix. And also that, of course, massive creature there that I think turns up in the old original X-Men, as well as the Sentinels. There's the Sentinels there. But that storyline, even though it shows on the cover, I don't think really sort of seems to actually get much of a mention. <laughs> they mention it on the cover. That's it. doesn't appear in the rest of the story. You've got Sauron. Sauron's story there. Oh, they're Sentinels. You do t they do turn up. Very, very... Not very much. They turn up finally on the cover again. This time, we actually do get the story with the Sentinels. Again, the font and that also the way that, that destroy all mutants just doesn't... Mm. I work a lot doing design and graphics and things, and I look at that and I just think, oh, just it makes it very hard. It just doesn't... It looks ugly. It looks ugly. Also, you've got these mutants as well. And that storyline is the one that's in the amazing adult fantasy. And, of course, you've got Magneto as well. And you've got the uh, amphibian, or whatever his name was. Leapfrog. I was calling him Leapfrog, but it's not. Amphibian. And, you've, of course, got a good old mastermind. And, you've, of course, got uh, Unus and a few other people as well there. And Magneto turns up as well. Of course, you wouldn't have an X-Men book without Magneto. And some Mariner. And it's actually quite, there's quite some sad stories as well in this. And this is one of them, the Angel storyline. That's quite a, a very, very sad story. And, and also, again, this weird mutant turns up. And, of course, uh, we've got uh, the Marvel Girl story is a bit odd as well. You've got Marvel Girl and Marvel Girl. There's a reason for that, which I'm not going to reveal. And also you've got an old character turning up, the Dazzler. Now, I think he appeared in one of those solo stories. I can't remember which issue it was, Marvel Tales, or one of those. Angel had briefly a couple of stories for himself. And uh, it's, uh, so you've got him, obviously, slightly a bit of a, an angry, avenging angel, as he says. And you've got the Sentinel story turn up again. So this is what I mean about it. it jumps a bit. You've got gaps there. I mean, the timeline, that's very odd. Just you've got two or three stories back. You've got the Sentinel story where they come, and then you've got, and then you've got the Sentinel story here. It does get com slightly confusing. And also you've got good old Craven there. I would have thought, this is one of the things I love about these sort of missing or hidden stories, is that you can introduce lots of these sort of characters. So you could have had Mysterio. You could have had Dr. Octopus. Now, Dr. Octopus against X-Men. That would have been good. Or Green Goblin or something. Or Sandman. You could have had Sandman against him. I think Sandman, in a sense, is a mutant anyway. So they could have done that storyline. And none shall break the promise. Again, slightly odd cover there. The covers are slightly odd. That's another thing, as well as the, there, the font. Promise of a new tomorrow. It's a bit, hmm. Avenging Angel again, and then you've got some with, oh, we've got the Mole Man storyline as well. And also you've got the Internals turn up as well. Everyone turns up in this. Actually, the only characters don't turn up, Doctor Doom or Red Skull. They might even be in here somewhere. I suspect they might, probably not. But you've got these mutants as well. Their storyline would have been interesting if they'd continued that storyline with a bit more detail. I don't know if they ever got developed into others, I think, but I don't know. Eh, the Mole Man, of course, doing his usual favourite to one. He always used that technique. But obviously with Fantastic Four issue one. And also, now finally, let loose the dogs of war. Again, a very... <laughs> sorry, I go on about that, but it's just odd. And you've got their Magneto looking quite slightly strange. That's a very unusual purple Magneto there. 
So that's it. We only got 22 issues. Now, I don't know if that was purpose. If there was a if there was a tension to continue because the last couple of pages look a bit like they've sort of been added on. So I don't know. Maybe there was an intention for 23, 24, 25, 50 page, you know, 50 more comics or something. But we also get this, which is a, just a weird addition. I would have loved a few more of the sort of like true missing stories. The ones like the Captain America one with Moonstone. Also, maybe the Hulk one with Mimic. That story. Also, some of the Beast or something. They could include a few of those. Instead, they included this, which is a very odd one. One, especially since the X-Men, I don't think, even appear in it. <laughs> so the X-Men, all the storyline, it's all Fantastic Four. Obviously, you've got Magneto, but there's no X-Men, which is just plain odd. You've even got, obviously, Richard Nixon there. I think in the UK, I don't know if we actually had Richard Nixon in that storyline. They probably changed it. It probably was... Uh, probably by the time we got it printed, it was probably Castle or something. They often did that. They redraw it. What's his name? Me. However, the story that I did enjoy that they included was really nice. The Amazing Adult Fantasy. Now, this was issue 14. Obviously, just before the major issue, Amazing Fantasy number 15 with Spidey and the Man in the Sky. And you've got, obviously, there's Tad Carter, who's featured in the story earlier. So there's a magazine that respects your intelligence. I love that bit. And just, that's great. Also, the weird thing is, for obviously the mutant story, the actual cut, they beware the giants. Now, unfortunately, the character here, obviously, which features in this, I don't think he ever had any more real great appearances. Maybe he did, maybe he didn't. I don't know. But I don't think he did. So, but the thing that gets me, it looks amazingly like Peter Parker. That is Peter Parker. There's a couple of other stories. And I always think that some of the other characters look sort of like Flash Thompson. Could easily be Flash Thompson. I don't know who that character looks like. There's probably someone, some of these other ones, you think, there's always a certain star. Yeah, maybe Jonah Jameson, that character up there. That's some great bits. Always wonderful story. However, he's a mutant and got obviously great powers. However, the next thing, bonus material. This. Why did they include the covers like this? Very odd. I mean, why didn't they include those as the story went through? I mean, that would have been much nicer. You would have had the full page picture and we could have worked out it's number two, number three, number four, etc. Or maybe just put a little four down the bottom or something. Instead, they've just done quarter size ones. Just doesn't look good and just weird. And then they didn't even continue particularly well. Because look, instead of just having it clean without any writing, so you've obviously got these ones here, you can see these ones have writing. So if you're going to include the covers without the writing, why have some with the writing on? Well, lettering, I should say. Just odd. Just odd, odd. But still, you've also got a few inked pages as well at the back. Some nice ones, but not many. Two or three. And that is it. An absolutely lovely book. I thoroughly enjoyed the stories, even if it's slightly, when I go through it, slightly confusing. I have to say that it does sort of like the time in the... Everything like that seems odd, where you've got two or three stories sometimes between storylines, you see, oh, that's continued on from that, and all the character appears, and then three stories later, finally we find out a little bit more, and then he doesn't appear again for another couple of stories, and so on. Slightly odd, but still, I loved it. Again, this is a very much a Marmite kind of book. You will love it, or you probably will not like it at all. But I thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed it. So 624 pages, just come out, and this is, of course, the X-Men the Hidden Years Omnibus.